Um, I've gotten a few questions about uh, rigid body kinetics number nine. Uh, that's the one where um, you have a rectangle, this rectangular body. Um, and you're given that um, it's a 40 degree angle between the vertical and the long axis. Um, and so that means that uh, it's also a 40 degree angle between the short axis and the horizontal. And you can come up with, you know, based on those, you can come up with um, directions for things. Um, I want you to notice one thing. Uh, I'm going to use this, a unit vector um, that points this way, you know, along that short axis, um, has components 0.766, you know, that's the cosine of 40 degrees, and then sine of 40 degrees, 0.643. And a unit vector Um, pointing this way, perpendicular to it, uh, has an x component of negative 0.643. You know, this is, so what I'm doing is, uh, this is 40 plus 90, so cosine and sine of 130 degrees is negative 0.643, positive 0.766, okay? So now to get around from one point to another along the edges or parallel to these directions, um, you can just multiply lengths times those unit vectors. So that'll be easy, make it easier to get our vectors and our uh, coordinates that we need. Okay, and uh, we need the mass of this thing. Um, the mass is the volume times the density. Uh, the volume is 2.1 times 1.3 times the thickness, <coughs> excuse me, 0.1. And then uh, we're given a density of 2,500 uh, kilograms per cubic meter. Two point one times one point three times point one times twenty five hundred. So the mass of this body is six eighty two point five kilograms. Um, And we're given a bunch of forces. We're given a velocity at the center of mass of this thing. Okay, so let's start going through sort of the steps that we can follow for any rigid body. So uh, the first thing is, uh, is there a fixed point? No, and that means that uh, the about point is going to be equal to the center, is going to be the center of mass. Okay, so we know that our about point for this problem has to be there at the center. Um, so now we can calculate the mass moment of inertia for that about point for the center. Um, we don't have to use parallel axis theorem anytime our about point is the center of mass. And so uh, for this shape, the mass moment of inertia is 1 12th times the mass, 682.5 times the quantity uh, length squared plus width squared. And so we get a mass moment of inertia of 
of 346.94. Um, and this is in kilogram meters squared. Um, so now that we have that, we've chosen our about point. Uh, let's do a free body diagram. Okay, so here's the body. It says to neglect the weight. Um, one way you can think about this is like, uh, we're looking at this spinning on like an air hockey table from above kind of, you know what I mean? So uh, the weight is uh, perpendicular to the plane we're looking at. Uh, we have a force vector at this point of negative 200, uh, negative 150. Um, and at the point C, we have a force vector of negative 400, uh, positive 300. Um, and it gives an angular velocity and a velocity of the center. Those don't show up in the free body diagram. And since we're neglecting weight, that doesn't show up. So now we can uh, write out the row vectors, the force vectors, and the moment vectors for these forces. Um, so first I'll do the, the one at A, this negative 200, negative 150. Okay, so the row vector, what does the row vector mean? So think of the definition. The row vector is the vector that goes from the about point to the point of interest. So the row vector for this, I'll erase this in a second, is that, okay? And um, that vector is equal to this plus this, okay? So I'm going to take one step along one of those unit vectors I came up with at the beginning, and then the other step along the other unit vector, I guess the negative of the other unit vector. And that's gonna give us a row vector for this force. Okay, so um, the so first I'm going to do this one, okay? The, the length of the whole rectangle is 2.1, so the length of that vector is 1.05. And so it's going to be, this row vector is going to be 1.05. I'll do sort of scratch work down here. So we have 1.05 times the unit vector that's negative uh, 0.643, positive 0.766. Stupid dog. And then uh, the next vector it, that we have to add on is this one, okay? Uh, so that has a length of half of 1.3.65 times the negative of the other unit vector I came up with, uh, shoot. That's all I wanna get rid of. So 0.65 um, times, so, and I want it to be the opposite of that other unit vector, which is 0 0.766, uh, 0 0.643. <coughs> okay, so <clears throat> 1.05 times negative 0.643. 0.766 plus negative 0.65 times 0.766, 0.643, 
and the row vector that you get is negative 1.17, 0 0.39. The force vector is negative 200, negative 150. And so the cross product okay, bear with me a second. So we want the row vector uh, crossed with that force vector. And um, since this is in the xy plane, all we're going to have is a z component. Um, so I'm just going to write the z component. So the z component is 253.23. OK. And then uh, we also have the force at C. The row vector for that, remember we're going from the, um, from the center of mass to that point. That's our row vector. And again, I'm going to do that in two steps, one parallel to the long axis and one parallel to the short axis. Um, well, actually, I'm going to... I'm going to save myself a little trouble and just notice that that's the exact opposite vector of the row vector to A. You see that? So um, I could do it with the same approach, um, or I could just realize that it's going to be opposite of this one. So there's our row vector. The force vector is negative 400, positive 300. Cross those two. And you get negative one ninety seven point three seven five. Three eight, let's call it. Okay. Um, so now, um, this object doesn't have a fixed point. Uh, that means we are going to have to use Newton's second law. Um, so Newton's second law says, and I'm just going to use the x and y components. Negative 200, negative 150, plus negative 400, positive 300, is equal to the mass, 682.5, acceleration of the center of mass. And so the acceleration of the center of mass this component is negative point eight eight. And the y component.
is positive 0.22. And now we can do the moment equation. Uh, I'm just going to use the z component of that. The x and y components are 0. So we have 253.23 minus 197.38 is equal to the mass moment of inertia. I calculated that in step two here, is equal to 346.94 times alpha. And that alpha is really the z component of the alpha vector. Um, so alpha 253.23. Minus 197.38 divided by 346.94, and you get okay. So let me let me do these both in 3D now, um, just so we see everything that we have here. So that's our acceleration vector, and our alpha vector. Um, what we solved for here is the z component, so this alpha vector is 0, 0, 0 0.161, and that's radians per second squared. Okay, so now um, we calculated everything we need to know about the acceleration. Now the questions that it asks you, A, B, and C, are what are the velocity at A, the velocity at C, uh, the acceleration of the point B at this instant. OK, so to do those, we're going to use the relative motion equation. So um, for part A, if we're trying to calculate the velocity of the point A, the velocity vector of A relative to the ground is equal to the velocity of A relative to the center plus the velocity of the center relative to the ground. The velocity of A relative to the center um, is a circular motion problem. Uh, we're given that um, the angular velocity is negative 6. That's a z component since this is in the plane. So we have omega cross r. Um, and r goes um, from the center of mass to the point that we care about. Um, and so this is 0, 0. Uh, negative 6 crossed with, uh, we're trying to go to A, so we already calculated that vector that we want, negative Um, and that cross product So the cross product of 0, 0, negative 6, and 
and negative 1.17 0.390 is 2.34 zero. Uh, this is meters per second and now we use relative motion and it tells you that the velocity of A relative to the ground is equal to 2.347.02 plus the velocity of the center relative to the ground, which is uh, given as 5, negative 3, 0. And so you get 7.34, 4.02, zero as the acceleration of A. Velocity vector of the point C at this instant. Um, that's what it asks you for in B. Well, so it's going to be relative motion again. So velocity of, oh boy, uh, this C, what I'm calling C here, let's call that the center of mass to differentiate from that point C that we're going to do now. Um, so ve the velocity of C relative to the ground is equal to the velocity of C relative to the center of mass plus the velocity of the center of mass relative to the ground. Um, well, it, you know, it works the same way. The velocity of C relative to the center of mass is um, omega cross R. Omega, it holds for the whole body, so that's 0, 0, negative 6. And the R vector is positive 1.17, negative 0.39. Um, and that's just going to be negative 2.34, negative 7.02. And now use relative motion, and you get that the velocity of C relative to the ground is equal to... Uh, negative 2.34, negative 7.020, zero, uh, plus the velocity of the center is still the same, so 5, negative 3, zero. And so for the velocity of the point C, we get uh, 2.66 and negative 10.02. And then the last one asks us for the acceleration of the point B. Um, I'll leave this one for you to do, but it's the same idea. Um, the acceleration of B relative to the ground is equal to the acceleration of B relative to the center of mass plus the acceleration of the center of mass relative to the ground. And the acceleration of B relative to the center of mass you get from the watermelon equation. Um, the omega is given in the problem. The r is from the center of mass to the point B. And uh, that alpha 
is the alpha that we calculated from the kinetics. And then once you have that, you'll add it to the acceleration of the center of mass that we got from the kinetics. So that's rigid body kinetics number nine.